have here. <laughs> you just bagged a monster, dude. You oh my god, bro. <laughs> what just happened? I don't know, man. Hey folks, and thanks for tuning in to this episode of Michigan Gone Wild. On today's episode, Joe and I are here on the Black River in the northern lower peninsula and we're going after Michigan's native brook trout again. There is no more beautiful fish in northern Michigan than a brook trout and we're going after them today. Now we're going to be using a couple of approaches. We're in the late summer uh, and it's in the evening so we're going to be throwing, uh, I'm going to be using some poppers and grasshopper imitators, things like that on the top water. And uh, Joe's going to be throwing some spinners and spoons on the ultralight and we're going to try to get into them. First brookie of the day. I'm using a orange and silver cast master. And what I was doing here is if you look behind me, there's the weeds coming over the side of the bank here. I was trying to get it as close to those and work that bank. And that's how I got this to work to pay off. There he is. Whoop. There he goes. Get back after it. I know there's more in here. I, I love fishing this river. Tons of bookies. Now this one is a native brookie? I think so. It, it, the color is light, but it's still got a pretty good orange. I mean, you know, a lot of the stockers will still have some of the orange, but um, most of the fish you're going to catch in this river, especially in this stretch, are all going to be native anyways. Um, you know, there are some stockers that come up here, but for the most part, I mean, this is, this this is pretty is much wild, yeah, wild trout water. Yeah, I had to switch over from that Castmaster to, the, to this uh, Panther Martin black and, black and gold because I Castmaster's too heavy. It's yeah. This, the river's really shallow in most stretches that we're fishing. So the Castmaster's just too heavy. I'm getting hung up on rock, sticks, everything else. So I switched over to this, flipped it up against the log, and we uh, have another fish in the net. Got him. Looks like another fish, yeah. Thing. 
All right, now my approach today was uh, to use some terrestrials, hoppers, bugs, that kind of thing, uh, you know, different uh, ants. Um, I, and I got a couple strikes on them, but it just really wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. And we got to this really nice stretch and we saw risers just everywhere and couldn't get them to hit on the grasshopper. So I decided to switch over to a drake because we're still, we're still in a, in a little bit of a hex hatch, uh, you know, hex hatch season. So, uh, you know, I knew a, a, another bug might've, uh, might've done the trick and I threw it up there and was immediately getting strikes and finally hooked into that one. And that was probably six inches, but just an absolutely beautiful brook trout. And, uh, it still puts up a great fight. I'm using a, a, a TFO BVK three weight. Um, you know, if you get out on a small brookie stream with a three weight uh, like that, I mean, you can feel every bit of the fight. You can feel every bit of the uh, the hook set, um, and it just makes for a really fun time, even on a smaller fish. Got him. Look at that. Nice double. Oh, he got a stick. stick. All right, you catch the sticks. I'll handle the catching of the fish. <laughs> There's another one on that drake, and this one's got some really nice color, really nice red belly. Um, I just, I love seeing those. They're just so pretty when they get that real red color to them. I'm going to get him back in the water. And you know, I love, I just love catching brook trout out here. And being on the Black River for me is, is always just a special experience. It's, it doesn't matter if I come out and catch two and three inch brookies or don't even see a fish all day or come out and catch uh, you know some nice 12 to 15 inches it's always a good experience getting into the black river for me um, you know fly fishing and trout fishing goes back in my family generations and so when I step into the black river it's it's not just stepping into a river to go after fish I'm, I'm stepping into a whole other world for me I'm stepping into my past I'm getting into a world where I'm thinking about memories of going down the black river and inner tubes with my parents and with my older sister back when I was really young um, all the way up to fishing with my dad. I fish the Black River, I fish for trout. My dad fishes for trout, he fished the Black River. Uh, my uncle Leo, great uncle Leo, he fished in the Black River for more years than I've been alive. Um, and my grandpa Jizo and his father before him, they all fish for trout, they all fish the Black River. So for me to jump into this river, I don't care what I'm catching. Uh, it's just a special experience for me. And I think anybody would be lucky to have a home river like that where every time they step in, they're stepping into their past and they're stepping into generations of heritage and tradition. And so it's just always a good time and just a, a, a great special experience to get out here and be able to, uh, to be part of that. That's a good brook trout right there. This is by far the biggest brook trout I have ever caught. Look at the size of this fella, guys. Just pulled him off this tree stump here. I've been fishing this tree stump nice and slow, and I just hooked into a monster. I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna lose my mind, so. <laughs> we decided to get out of the river and, and get you some footage of this, of this brook trout up close. This is an absolute, awesome brook trout for a northern Michigan stream. Most of the time I'm catching brook trout anywhere from seven to, to 10 inches, I think is the biggest one that I've ever caught. We did a quick measure on him and he looks like he's about 13 inches. So I'm gonna put him safely back in the creel because he's coming home with me. I love to eat these things. And I'm gonna get back after it.
Well, there we go. Released him. Got him back in the water. Now what I'm doing is I'm just fishing these deep, the deep holes and I'm working them really slow. And I switched over to a silver and yellow Panther Martin just for more visibility to the fish. Because the, the black and gold, like, I don't know if they could see it. So as soon as I switched over to this, I started picking up fish. Oh, he just kind of hung out on the surface and splashed. Yeah. <laughs> there wasn't even any tension on the line. He's just splashing around. <laughs> Must have been fun. Oh, he's pretty. Oh, yeah, he is. Rookies go after even these huge bugs. I mean, you know, we're getting close to dark. The sun's starting to hit. They're set behind the trees, and and that's always a good time to switch over to bigger bugs. But it just blows my mind how smaller brookies can hit these big, gigantic drake flies, and you know they're large hex imitators just impressive to me and just so pretty that's real right bright red belly just love it just absolutely love it all right now we got into a hole here that's uh, a little congested there's some overhanging branches a uh, an overhanging cedar which is next to impossible to get out of if you catch your fly up in it so um, Joe's taking a turn at this hole, and what he's doing is he's utilizing the flex on that TFO ultralight, and he's using a slingshot cast to get up under the tree and into those rocks uh, where the trout are holding. Um, and that's a great technique to use uh, if you get into water like this. Using that slingshot cast is fantastic. Um, just make sure when you're doing that that you're slingshotting it all the way to where you want it to be and not skipping it across the water. Now that does work for certain species. I mean, you can use that for bass, and uh, you know if you've got a, a way to utilize a slingshot cast for bluegill, it's really not going to bother them. But in a small trout stream, uh, you know, skipping across the water it will scare every fish in the hole before it even gets to where you want it to be. So if you're going to utilize a slingshot cast like he's doing, make sure that you're getting it all the way to your uh, to your target area um, before you start your retrieve. Yep. All right, we're going to switch course and head downstream. Um, we uh, had some great luck moving upstream, but it's getting a little dark, so we're going to head back toward uh, toward the truck, and we're going to fish our way down. Now, going downstream with a fly rod, there's really nothing more effective uh, than a coachman. And you know, you talk to any of the old guys, you know, you go into shops, local shops around here, um, and talk about trout streams, and you're going to hear the same thing from every single one of them. Hey, you ever try a coachman? because coachmans are probably the most effective downstream wet fly that you can use. Um, and I actually recently in some family property, I, uh, I stumbled across some old coachmans. And, and I don't even know when these were tied. These were actually probably tied before I was even born. And if you see the box that I, I found them in, you'd be able to tell. Um, but uh, these are some old classic coachmans tied by my great uncle Leo, who has uh, since passed away, um, but left some great flies behind. And uh, so I'm gonna tie one of these on and see if they're still effective even 20 years later. I don't think he's very big, but he's a fighter. Come on, buddy. Well, that coachman is older than us, yeah? I think so. Actually, I think these, these coachmen were probably tied, I don't know, early 80s. Um, yeah, these are old flies, but no. My Uncle Leo, he was old school, and he only tied a few different patterns, but he knew what he was doing, and he definitely tied some good coachmen. Good color on that guy too. You know, we got downstream just a just a short ways and tossing that coachman into a deep hole and just kind of let it drift. Um, and it didn't take long, and I could feel the tug and uh, hooked up on this guy. And he's pretty, he's, he's awfully, uh, awfully good looking fish. So I'm gonna keep working this coachman. I think probably the rest of the way down. All right, we have had a great evening out on the Black River uh, here. We've had some great fishing and got into some awesome fish. Joe caught one of the nicest uh, brook trout I've ever even seen come off this river. So awesome fish on that one, buddy. Thank you, thank you. Um, that had to have been a blast. Oh, it was. When, as soon as I hooked him, I'm like, oh, this one's a, this one's a good one. It had the TFO rod bent to its nice. potential. Yeah, those those big boys will bend that thing right over. So it was a great night. We caught some some smaller brookies as well, some other keepers. Um, and just had a good time. I mean, it's just always always a joy when we get the chance to get out here, uh, you know, and, and enjoy nature here in northern Michigan, enjoy the outdoors. 
and uh, get out on the streams that we love. So, uh, folks, thanks for tuning in. I'm Jordan Kettlewell. This is Joe Sullivan, and uh, you're watching Michigan Gone Wild. Folks, get out and get wild and stay wild. Of a child on Michigan gone wild.